Hello guys, we are doing something a little bit different today. We are going to be foam rolling together. So we got seven muscles we're gonna stretch. We're gonna be holding each of them for about 45 seconds each. Um, I did record this entire intro and then realized my head was cut off. So I've already done the stretches and my computer kept stopping my timer throughout. So I'm sorry if the times are a little bit off, but I will talk you through everything throughout the workout. So let's just, this isn't a workout, this is a stretch. Everything throughout this stretching video. Um, but make sure that you are prioritizing your stretching. It's gonna make such a big difference in your recovery. And let's get started. First, we're starting with our calf muscles. Okay, so you're gonna come down and you want to place the foam roller near your knee, not on your knee. Now you can either have your foot down or for added pressure, you have it on top. So during this, we're just gonna talk about foam rolling, what it is, why it's important, why it's helpful, how you should do it. Um, so first we're doing it for 45 seconds per side. So we're gonna spend the first half dynamically rolling to kind of play around see where the greatest tension is. And then for the second half, you're gonna be holding it there. Okay, so you wanna find a place and you're gonna hold. And then once the timer goes off, then we'll be switching to the other side. Again, starting with dynamic rolling and then finding the greatest spot of tension and holding. We are going to be doing seven different muscle groups today. So like I said, we're starting with um, the calves first. But first of all, you want to know what is what is foam rolling? So foam rolling is self myofascial release. Um, the fascia are basically tissues, connective tissues that surround your muscles. So you know, normally when you're stretching, you're stretching your muscles, but this is going to kind of help to get deeper um, and it's gonna help your muscles stretch more. Uh, now we're gonna go to the outside. Okay, so we're going to our peroneus, which basically we're staying down um, and the lower half of our leg, but coming on the outside. This one for me, because my calves get very tight, um, so I like to spend a lot of time on them. Your calves will play a huge role in the rest of your body as well. Everything is connected. So I'm gonna hold here, this is where I feel a lot of tension. So I'm gonna hold, when you're holding, you don't want it to be like an excruciating pain, but it should be uncomfortable. Foam rolling is not meant to be comfortable. And now I'm gonna switch to the other side like this so you guys can still see me um it's not meant to be comfortable it's supposed to be a little bit uncomfortable but still not be painful okay so if you're in pain then stop you don't want to do that yeah wow this feels this feels good today i ran 10 miles and then by the time i get this up i'm training for a half marathon so this video is going to help me I'm gonna stay right here. This is where I feel the greatest tension. Um, by the time that I put this video up and edited it, I will hopefully have successfully done my half or be very close to doing it. Okay, we're gonna come up to our hamstrings. So your hamstrings are not just one muscle, they're a group of muscles. So you really wanna play around with this and focus on getting kind of the outside, the inside of your thigh. Um, and with this too, one thing that a lot of people don't know is that the fascia run in all directions. So you wanna make sure that you're going like side to side as well as up and down. Okay, so again, find where you kind of feel the greatest tension and then hold it there. So, so far we have done our calves and we have done our peroneals and now our hamstrings. Ooh, yeah, this feels, this feels good. It's gonna be important to stretch your hamstrings as well because if you have um, overactive hamstrings, which basically means that you need to stretch them, then when you're doing squats, you know, your knees may be caving in, which is super dangerous, you do not want that. Also, I think my timer might have turned off. 
we are back. We're still on our second hamstring. Um, and I wanted to talk about why we're doing the amount that we're doing. Um, because you don't wanna spend too long foam rolling, but you also want to make sure that you give your muscles enough time for autogenic inhibition to occur. So basically, you want the stimulation of your Golgi tendon organ to be greater than the excitation of your muscle spindles. Basically, the neural impulses, um, like, the neural impulses are going to tell your muscles to relax instead of to contract. That's basically it simplified. Okay, we're flipping over. We're gonna do our quads next. Okay, so let's come up. Again, just like with the hamstrings, you have more than one quad muscle, so you wanna play around with it. Get the inside, the outside, and again, back and forth movements. Not just up and down, but also side to side. Once you find somewhere you wanna stay, then you're gonna hang out there. So we got our quads. After this, we're gonna get into our hip flexors. Those definitely, I need to stretch. Now I'm gonna do my other quad first. Other quad first. Should feel really good. Honestly, foam rolling, the first time you do it, it might be a little bit unexpected, but once you get used to it, you'll probably really enjoy the the feeling unless that's just me i'm also the weird person that like i love tattoos because i like the pain so i'm just a weirdo so that's fine right it's fine so choose see where you have the greatest point of tension and then you're gonna stay there yep feeling it completely turned off again and next we're gonna come into our hip flexors because my computer just wants to keep Keep turning off okay so now you're gonna come kind of to the top of your thigh okay so the top in this one you really want to roll side to side up and down again move around play around with it and then you should hold so now when you guys hear those beeps, those beeps are just gonna be wrong. Okay, I'm so sorry. And we're gonna come to the other side, other hip flexor. I'm gonna add music on top, so hopefully when I'm not talking, you can enjoy, enjoy some tunes. But yeah, that's kind of like the basics of foam rolling. Um, another thing is that you can use it before your workout or after your workout um, or your run, whatever you're doing, your activity for the day. Um, if you're doing it beforehand, you'll probably want to apply a bit less pressure because your muscles are not warmed up yet. So you wanna be a little bit gentler on them uh, we're going to come into our glutes. Now the glutes are a little bit harder to get into. Um, so we're going to come up, okay? Uh, I like to choose like one glute to focus on, cross my other leg over, and then roll around your glutes. With your quads, with your hamstrings, with your calves, you have multiple glute muscles. So you want to play around, move around, this timer is gonna be so off now. I'm so sorry. Okay, this is where we were. We were on our glutes. The good thing is, is that we've only got, you know, less than less than two minutes left. Okay, we're going to our opposite glute, opposite glute. So again, you can cross your leg over. You can see I'm not as flexible on this which is why I really gotta stretch foam roll more. Make it a priority in your workout. I feel like a lot of times stretching gets put on the back burner when you're tight on time, but it's super important that before you work out, you're doing a dynamic workout, um, warm up. Again, you can either do foam rolling before and or after 
but you want to make sure you're getting in a dynamic warm-up and then static stretching after or again adding in some self myofascial release aka um your foam rolling all right so now we're coming to the outside our tensor fascial lotta so we're kind of pivoting over again should feel really good get nice and deep in there oh that's a d we love it and then my timer i still got 45 more seconds 45 more seconds of my other side my timer wants to tell me i'm done though but i'm not yet oh yeah Yep, see, saying we're done. We got one more. I'm gonna reset this timer one more time. All right, we reset. We're going for our tensor fasciolata on the other side. Um, hopefully this helps you learn a little bit about foam rolling. There are some spots you don't want to foam roll, your low back, your neck. Um, places like that, it's just not safe to do. Um, anything else? You typically want to start at the place of insertion, or no, the place of origin, work down to the place of insertion. So it's gonna be starting generally closer to your core than working uh, downward and out, away. But again, it's all about playing, finding where your knots are. And if you have a really bad knot, then you want to first foam roll around, around that knot. So like above it and below it before you foam roll right on that knot. But that is it. Thank you guys for foam rolling with me. I hope that it is helpful for you to hold yourself accountable. This helps me accountable to stretching after my run. And I hope you guys have a great rest of your day.